Hello everyone, I'm the Catholic Bible Geek. Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to do another video installment of my series on answering critiques that uh, Protestants often have toward Catholicism or reasons why they think Catholicism isn't really Christianity or Catholics aren't truly saved or any of those things. We, uh, we looked at one previously. Today we're going to look at a topic that I have to be pretty specific about because to be honest, not not every Protestant has this critique about Catholicism. They kind of do. It's complicated. Let me, let me put it this way. Protestants themselves can debate about this issue. And I'm talking about the issue that are you saved through faith or works or both? It's interesting that, you know, certain denominations like uh, that come from a Calvinist stream, you know, so a lot of Baptists, Presbyterians and so forth, or, you know, as, as we're getting into the, the it's, it's in vogue today to have just non-denominational churches, you know, names of churches that have no denominational affiliation whatsoever. And you really have to peel through all of the, 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 the religious speak on their website or just go pin down their pastor and ask them specifically, you know, and then you'll finally get, okay, well, we follow the Baptist or we follow the Methodist or whatever. So a lot of, um, like I said, Catholics, I mean, Baptists, Presbyterians, um, anyone from a Calvinistic background, especially a lot of those non-denominational churches, because the, that Baptist mentality is very prevalent, that Baptist theology in America, specifically the South, you know, where I'm from. But then on the other hand, you've got Protestant denominations that come from an Armenian kind of background about these things. And, and that would include Methodists, uh, Wesleyans, you know, um, Calvary chapels, a lot of uh, other, and again, pl plenty of non-denominational churches that uh, that would affiliate themselves with this idea. The interesting thing, though, is that when Protestants debate each other about this, they tend to do it under the topic of once saved, always saved. You know, one side believes yes, one side believes no. You know, can you lose your salvation? That idea. When they debate with Catholics, though, it, suddenly it's all about are you saved by works or by faith? Well, which is it? Because they've got their Bible verses armed with those to talk about. It's interesting. You can't really divorce those two debates from each other, because if you're not saved once and for all, and if you can possibly lose your salvation, then I guess works are kind of important, right? <laughs> you know, uh, so, so the, the, the two debates, they really are the same. I just don't know why they, they tend to um, use different topics or different headings when they, depending on whether Protestants are debating other Protestants or Protestants are debating Catholics. So we're going to look at some of those things here today. And again, this is a big topic, could talk a long time on this, but I'll try to be as brief as possible. So let's just go for the critique first. The critique, you'll hear uh, some Protestants will say, you Catholics, you know, saying you have to go to Mass every Sunday, you have to partake of the Eucharist, you have to be baptized, you have to do this, this, and that. Um, well, you're just you're just looking at say it's salvation by works, you know, and, and if you have to go confess, you know, so your sins will be forgiven and so like you just you're just trying to do salvation by works. And doesn't Romans uh, three verse twenty eight say that for we hold that a man is justified by faith apart from works of law? Your translation might even say by faith alone. That's one verse they'll bring up. It would seem, you know, on the surface, if they just throw that verse out, it's like, well, yeah, faith alone. So what are you Catholics talking about with works? Another verse they'll commonly point out is Ephesians chapter 2. Look at uh, verse 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not because of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, well, that there you go. Makes makes This is by faith. This has nothing to do with your works, right? It's by faith. Well, there are several problems with that, and there you always be leery of, of people who use random out of context verses as proof texts. Sometimes you can point to a verse acknowledging that you're, you're using it out of context. Here's the general context, but I'm just using it, you know, as a, as a confirmation of what I'm saying over here in this other text. You know, you can do that. I'm not just saying you always need to preach the whole and talk about the whole chapter or whole book. But let's look at these examples. In Romans 3, Romans chapter 3, verse 26, where we hold that a man is justified. And you're, again, your translations would probably say by faith alone, if you have a Protestant translation. That faith alone isn't in the original text. Some people had tried to put it in there. Most notably, Luther decided it needed to be in there. Luther wanted to change, as I've said before, a lot of things about the Bible. He was successful at taking a lot of books out of the Bible, out of the Old Testament in particular, and he wanted to take many books out of the New Testament. He added that word alone to that Roman so that we could, he could assert that your salvation is by faith alone, not works. And then he wanted to take out of the Bible completely 
certain New Testament books, Revelation, I believe, especially the, uh, the book of James, because here in the book of James, James chapter 2, verse 24, you see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. That, that blatantly contradicts what Luther would, would have been trying to say. Your salvation is by faith alone, only by faith alone. Yeah. Now, even without that word alone in there, these passages do tend to kind of, well, they, they seemingly contradict each other, right? So we do need to look at all of these in context as we go. But let's look at the other verse that they might throw at you, the Ephesians verse. Chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not because of works, lest any man should boast. But they rarely actually include verse 10 when they throw these verses at you. And here's what verse 10 says. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. We're created for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now, it's interesting, and it's kind of, it, it get, it, sometimes it boils down into semantics. And it's a silly debate. And you wonder why people are so um, adamant about holding to this idea that salvation by faith alone, that, that's it. That's it. That's it. Stop talking. Nothing else. When that's simply not what the Bible preaches. The Bible does have these things. It does say faith alone. Okay, well, what does that mean? And how can we make that work with what the Bible also says about works? Now, um, a Protestant response to that, specifically a Protestant, especially a Protestant Calvinist response to that is that, well, if you have true faith, if you're truly saved, then you will do those works. Because as James also says in there, show me your your, your faith and I'll show you my works, or I'll sh show you my faith through my works. They're linked. This is true. This is true. But the, the, the one from a Calvinist perspective who's trying to preach this idea is trying to desperately hold again to that idea of once saved, always saved. Uh, and that is linked to the Calvinist idea of double predestination. Now, we know that the Bible does say God has preordained us to heaven, and he foreknew. Absolutely. But it also says that God is willing that none should perish. So this notion that God preordained some for heaven and preordained some just to go to hell is, is it's just silly. You can't make sense of it. And I know it seems flippant. And I'm try not trying to be flippant that you could say something like that just seems silly when it, you've got this whole, you know, centuries long tradition from Calvin himself down with this idea, but it just doesn't hold water. It doesn't make sense or jive with the rest of the gospel or the, the, the gospel as we see it in scripture. So what, what does it mean then? If, it, if it's not just that, well, if you're truly saved, you will do works because that, that doesn't make sense either because Paul in places like, uh, this is a verse I commonly quote because it's so important. It's so uh, true to the, to the uh, Christian life. We need to, to constantly be thinking about it. And this is in Philippians. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now not only is in my presence, but much more in my absence. Work out your salvation. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For God is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. Well, if our salvation was something that we received once, especially if it was preordained, if God preordained it, then you're a robot. What's, what's the, what's the problem? What's, what are you working out with fear and trembling? You're, you're, you're good. He's pre-programmed you. You're, you're, you can't do anything but produce good works because he's already preordained you to have the faith that saves you. So these verses don't quite make sense unless, unless salvation isn't a one-time event and it's not a one-time irresistible event. This is what the Catholic Church teaches. This is what many uh, Protestants, you know, from an Arminian background would teach. You can lose your salvation. You, you, got, you can't, well, lose the salvation is a silly way of saying it. You can reject God at any point. Even a saved person walking with Christ can decide that they're done. They're going to reject it. And you see this happen all the time. You know, it's tragic, but you see it happen. And the once saved, always saved person will, would have to fall back on, well, then they were never truly saved. And you see how this is kind of like a childlike reasoning. It's just like we're going to reorder all of these things, the reality around us to make sure our philosophy still stands. It just doesn't hold water. But yes, you can when you're saved. And here's the notion here that we're talking about. Salvation 
even Protestant Bible scholars will tell you, the words we see used for salvation, the tenses we see salvation spoken of in the New Testament are threefold. I'll just give you one example in first, uh, actually we'll look at Romans. Romans chapter five, starting at verse 10. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall, we'll be, shall we be saved by his life? That's one example of a verse that has all three of the tenses in it. But you'll find in other passages, which I just I won't belabor you with going through all of it. But, you know, when we were saved, we were saved. Um, you know, you will be saved. You know, that, those kind of those kind of phrasings. So now a Protestant uh, theologian who looks at that will say, that, yeah, there are three tenses of salvation. We were saved. We are being saved and we will be saved is what they will say. Um, but if, if that doesn't really work, if, if I was saved and that was I, I can't ever do anything about that. I was saved. That's it. Then I have no need to be saved now, nor will I have a need to be saved in the future if I was saved once and for all and that I can never change that. The, the, the present tense and future tense have no no bearing on that. And some people might just play, play semantics. Well, I mean, save from what? You know, save to different degrees or whatever. No, we're talking about salvation from sin. Well, that's what we're talking about. Salvation into eternal life. So the Catholic Church would say that those three sayings as well, but we would add a significant and important clarification. A Catholic, you know, uh, Protestants would like to ask Catholics, you know, are, well, are you born again though? But are you saved? You know, because some poor Catholics, they just, they, they cradle Catholics, maybe poorly catechized and they didn't, didn't really, you know, uh, learn some of these things from the Bible yet. They're, they're, they're devout and, and trying to follow their life in, according to Christ and the church's teachings. And they might stu stu stumble up at some of these questions. Well, are you saved? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm hoping that I'll go to heaven. Oh, but no, you should know it. You should know it because the Bible says it's a free gift. And, and again, you see how they, they're very manipulative and, and, and subversive with these kinds of things. Any Catholic asked if they are saved should say, yes, I have been saved. I am being saved right now as I continue to work out that salvation with fear and trembling. And I hope to be saved in my death. They're all kind of trigger words that will just trip off uh, some Protestants into, you know, oh, you're paganistic. No, you're not, you're not sure. There's no salvation at all. No, if, if salvation isn't unchangeable. If I can, if I have free will at all, if I'm not a robot, then it stands that at any point in this life, I can turn my back on God and his salvation. Now, I can't imagine a, a scenario in which I would ever, ever do that. And I can, I can confidently tell you, no, I will never do such a thing. And, you know, colloquial parlance here, but am I God? Do I know the future? No. Do I know that, uh, that I won't be angry and, and selfish and in a moment of, of mortal sin clinging to that or something at the time of death. I can't tell you that for absolute sure. I'm not worried about that happening. I, I don't think that's going to happen. But just in the case that we're human beings and we don't know the future, it's presumptuous of us to say, oh, no, I'll never do that. You're a human. Do you know the future? No. So that's why we say we, we hope to be saved. You know, we, we pray that uh, for Mary to ask Mary to pray for us at the moment of our death. That's a whole other thing. You know, Mary... In that prayer, we call her full of grace. We recite Gabriel's very words to her. Hail Mary, full of grace. What does that mean? That means that Mary was already full of grace. We are trying to grow in grace. We've been given the grace of, of initial salvation for free. And that initial grace, that initial salvation, which is by faith, it's a free gift that we receive by faith. And even the faith that we have to receive it is God given. So yeah, no, we can't. We, you know, when he talks about Ephesians, you know, lest any man should boast, it's not given by works. Yeah. Our salvation in our time of baptism or whenever we've had that moment in the past, that is by faith alone. And that faith was given to us by God. We can never say, I earned my salvation. Even after that, though, when we do have a response, a requirement to walk and to work out that salvation with fear and trembling, these are the good works that, that the Bible talks about that God has preordained for us to walk in. These are our, our, our responsibility to choose and constantly say yes to and to work out. These are our good works. But even those we don't do of our own power. We do that by the grace of God. When we've said yes to that initial gift of faith, uh, of salvation through faith, then we receive graces to then work out that salvation in fear and trembling. We receive the grace to do good works. And as we continue to grow in that grace, as we 
do good works. And as we turn away from temptation and turn away from sin, we continue to grow in grace and grow in that grace. And growing in grace is another way of saying growing in holiness. So when Gabriel tells Mary, hail Mary, full of grace, he's saying you're full of it. Grace, that is. You, 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 you've got no growing to do. And that's what the Catholics believe. Mary was immaculately conceived for the purpose of bearing Christ and so forth. And that was through Christ's sacrifice as well, not of any works of her own. That was a gift that was given to her ahead of time, but still uh, dependent on Christ's sacrifice. Christ is Mary's Savior, just as he is our Savior. But full of grace. That's what we want to be. So when we ask Mary to pray for us, we're asking her to help us become as she is. As she is, as our as our mother in Christ, to to grow to the point that she is, to be what she is in that sense. She's we're not praying to her, worshiping her, but that's that's a good example of the full of grace. We want to be growing in grace. We we've been saved. We had that free gift of faith that wasn't given to us by works, as Paul says in Ephesians. And yet, as Paul says in Philippians, we have to work out our salvation in fear and trembling. So we're being saved right now. We're working it out. Every day we get up, we resist temptation. We're trying to do the right thing, to make the right choices, to be faithful to the church's teachings and so forth, in hopes that we will, that'll continue and we will be saved at the moment of our death. And that's not, that's not uh, cheapening salvation. That's not saying, oh, I don't know if the coin toss goes my way at my death. No, no, not at all. God's not unjust. God's not, you know. That's not what we're saying. We're just simply saying that we're not presumptuous to say we know the future. Again, I'm not worried about it, but I also can't tell you because I'm only a human. It'd be, it wouldn't be right for me to tell you I know the future and this is going to happen. You know, I can have every intention of having pizza for dinner tomorrow night. I can I can just know that everything's silly. I've got a frozen pizza in my in my micro, in my uh, refrigerator right now. Why in the world wouldn't I have frozen pizza tonight? If I tell you I'm going to do it, I can purpose in my heart and I know this will happen. What if the power goes out? What if, you know, all these kinds of things can happen? So we don't we don't presume upon the future. So this uh, this 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 false argument of, yeah, but salvation is by faith. It's not by works. Well, you can look in the Bible where the Bible clearly says they, they are linked and they're not linked in this uh, sort of silly uh, wraparound reasoning of, oh, well, it's because if you have faith, then you will do the works. No, listen to what James says. And this is what I'll close with. Because he says, you, you you do your works, your, uh, salvation, you know, you, 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 you're saved by your works. Don't uh, don't become a transgressor of the law and so forth. And he says, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. And James says, show me your faith apart from your works. And I, by my works, will show you my faith. You can't show faith apart from works. You can't show works apart from faith. These two are linked. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. So it can't just be my faith in God that saves me. Even the, the the demons believe in God. They know who God is too. But we have the faith that he'll save us. And then we decide in our free will to work out that faith, work out that salvation. Again, I can go a lot longer with this, uh, but we're 20 minutes or so now. So I'm going to stop. But that is the the answer. If, if uh, you know, if the Catholic, if Protestants will, will try and challenge you, but are you born again? Well, yeah, I was baptized. That's what the Bible says. Being born again is. But, uh, but are you truly saved? Yes, I was saved. And if you're living your life, if you truly are living your life and trying to to uh, to grow in holiness, to grow in grace, and grow in your the graces Christ gives you and bestows, and and the sacramental graces of the church and so forth, then you are being saved, and you hope to be saved in the end. And that's not a slight to God's gift. That's that's the simple reality of God's gift coexisting with our free will that he's also given us and decided to maintain. Again, I can go much farther into it, but that's all I'll do for now. Uh, if you if you want certain pockets of this topic kind of explain more in their own videos, we can definitely do that. We can go into that. But for right now, just answering that criticism and we'll move on to some other things. But uh, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. And until next time, God bless.